So it's my absolutely incredible um, pleasure to be able to tell you that with us tonight is the artistic director of the ACO, Richard Tonietti, <laughs> and some of his colleagues. Richard, come on out. Yes. I, Richard, before we invite the others out... Oh, I the mean, others? Okay. I, so sorry, is the entire game here. I just, I feel like the mere fact of your presence implies that you weren't given a proper brief about this. No, well, I mean, also, inviting a classical violinist to a comedy show is a bit like inviting an undertaker to God knows what, right? <laughs> Well, this is but not really a comedy am, show. We're know. just funny for journalists. We're not actually you are, funny. You're a, the, the two of you are officially insane in the best possible way. Your face when I walked out this afternoon when you were rehearsing and I came up to say hi and I was already done like this. I think it was like this. <laughs> I was just wondering where Lee Sales was. But thank, thank God I didn't just accept this gig on my own and I brought the cult with me. Woohoo! Now, is there anything you want to tell us before you play? Um, yeah, we have a, a little surprise for her later on. <laughs> uh, Can't say too much. So, um, I've got some colleagues from the Australian Chamber Orchestra and beyond, Satu Vanska, who's going to sing a song. But first of all, we're going to play... I thought, what could I choose to depict these two incredible ladies talking? And so we're playing a little piece by Niccolo Paganini, the virtuoso violinist... <laughs> And it's arranged for two violins, and it's really fast, and we kind of talk over each other the whole time. <laughs> and and, and, it, and I, I, it's called Caprice Number no. 5, but I, I've, I've renamed it Prattle at Speed. <laughs> and then we're going to play a song, an original song called Wollongong 1974. Wollongong 1974, and Sadhu's going to sing. And then we're going to um, finish um, with a, a song um, inspired by another crazy person in the best possible way, Heston Blumenthal. It's a proto-punk song, ladies and gentlemen, called Heston. <laughs> and then you'll come back and talk to us on the couch? Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Please welcome Richard and colleagues. Thank you. 
Oh, that was nothing like us at all. <laughs>
Wow. Um, I have one question. Is there anything that Satu is not good at? Because I'm yet to see anything. Well, even though she's um, Finnish, she's not the best skier. <laughs> well, that is a serious chink in her armour. I mean, uh, I'm not surprised to see you're just the classically predictable, you know, Scandy punk stuff that the ACO has been trundling out <laughs> for decades. I just like, you... when are you people going to think of something new? <laughs> well, I'd say sitting on a couch with two weirdos dressed as Madonna in the Enmore Theatre is that's out there. It is groundbreaking territory for the ACO, I do agree. Um, I... And that was a cheap but, I think, filling shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's funny, I was thinking actually of exactly that but in a serious way, which is, so I first interviewed you in 1996. I love when I that. Was the... I was thinking exactly that but in a serious way, you know, like in a sort of like a, an actually interesting way as opposed see, to your throwaway see, remark. It, it is just like the piece we played, isn't it? It is exactly <laughs> like that, Richard. You, you, that was an inspired choice. It was We were laughing because it was like, oh, that is exactly like well, us. Can I, before you ask me a serious question, I have to to say that when I first started listening to your podcast, I thought I had it on twice the speech. You're and not I the first thought, person I kept, to say I was, that. I was driving along and I thought, this is dangerous. And, I, I was, <laughs> and then I kept on thinking... Oh. Yeah, we, we have heard that before. <laughs> um, now, so I first interviewed you in 1996 and the thing that absolutely amazes me about the ACO is that you've always managed to keep it kind of fresh and with a feeling of energy, which is truly amazing given how long you've been doing that. And I'm wondering, is there some secret to keeping that kind of enthusiasm and innovation going all the time? Like, as I mentioned, I saw you with James Crabb recently and what, part of the reason that really stuck with me was just the level of enthusiasm and passion that was vis totally visible and palpable, you know, on the stage. It's amazing. It's a classic hard-hitting question. It's like, tell me, sir, are you a saint or a genius? I demand to know. <laughs> Answers. Answers now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to let you finish. Take, I'm, Richard, I'm take not, my question. I'm not stuck for words. I'm just wondering if I should say this, but what the hell. I, I, I'm going to pay you two months' salary, SBS salary, if, if her last show on 7.30 report is A, dress like that, that, and B, you haven't... Uh, Bring her on. Her well, on I side. think there'd be a lot of support for both of those <laughs> things. I mean, so, it was like, you know, Conan um, O'Brien, when he wound up after he got the sack for, what's his name, Jay Leno, he had, like, a, a yeah. week or so of shows left, and he just spent the network's money on air. Like, he, like burned a Lamborghini, <laughs> played like a minute and a half of Hey Jude. Like it was incredible. Like it was just, you know, imagine, it was imagine so good. For my final show, I came on like this and I went, um, good evening, welcome to the program. For my final program, please welcome the musicians of the ACO. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, and if we had to play be music, awesome. okay, it would be, you're talking about the James Crabb relative. Um, so the um, accordionist. And he plays the music by Astor Piazzolla, the great tango composer. And it's such alluring music, mm. isn't it? And, um, and it's music that is best enjoyed live, of course. Right. And so, uh, you know, so reinvention is what it's all about. And so I started writing music that was used in some films. And, um, and, um, and I wanted to use some vocal elements and... One day I, I was sitting there with a microphone and um, I'm not going to do an impersonation now of my own self. Oh, come on. You'll, I think no, everybody is now expecting you'll, it. You'll, you'll leave. You'll leave. <laughs> anyway, I, I was singing and it wasn't nice, but I, I just wanted to get an idea of a melodic line and Satu walked past. She's also my wife. And she, she, she walked past and went, yuck. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, and I didn't even know she was it such a good singer. And I said, well, you do it. And she went, okay. And then she sang it. And I went, oh, <laughs> there's something here. And then I started writing songs for her. Right. So this has been keeping uh, me very busy. Right. And, um, and so it is about reinvention, just finding new repertoire, new ways of doing things. As Michael Lunig, the great cartoonist, said, you can make great art with mud and a stick. And it's true. You don't need, you know, you don't need to have... Well, somebody also said wisely that you, how many asked, 
How many great books are written in large rooms? And normally they are in, written in small rooms. And we have a small orchestra, the Australian Chamber Orchestra. But everyone is on the same page and committed to the same things. And so we're a highly experimental little group. Do you argue in fiddles? Because like, halfway we, through that, I was we thinking, argue? well, this sounds like the most fantastic, intricate argument, you know, and um, I wonder if you ever just duke it out on the string. Richard when... and Satu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, look, they're debates. I mean, arguments are, are only negative if they're without resolve. And so long as they lead to something, and otherwise, why not just call it a debate? Then we're debating all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you still have to, at your level, practice every single day? Sorry, I know that's a really basic question. She's asking for her kid who's just got a cello. Wonder, like, can you ever... Kids, kids but, like, oh, okay. that guy seems fine, can you ever, I don't see him doing any practice. You, can you ever get to such a level where you no. can kind of rest on your laurels at all? Look, I don't want to put any aspiring violinists off or cellists, <laughs> yes. but unfortunately, it, it's like dancers, you know, especially ballet dancers who I would argue have it... The, the best and, and the worst, because, you know, they're dealing with their, their bodies and they're in tatters by the end of their careers, but they're always working. And so we, as, as string players, oh, look, all musicians, but especially string players, because we have these micro-muscular movements that we've got to attend to and consider all the time, and certain things don't get easier, you know, you've, you've got to keep limber, and so, yeah, we're practising all the time. And, and beginner violinists should practise as well, you know, and, and I, I was thinking, I was listening to your, uh, another crazy podcast when you pay, did you, b by the way, did you get free tickets when you went to Maverick? Oh, she did. I no, paid for I, them. She anyway, paid. She, she was a I freebie. I swanned in there. I, I paid for popcorn, <laughs> but I also and, ate most of it, so and, it seemed and, uh, quite a fair I, deal. I don't know if you all heard the podcast, but of course it was a terrific podcast. I mean, I, I had to put it on half speed in order to understand <laughs> it, but... Um, could have, and he could play a violin I, I, with I like think you 2,000 strokes a second. I think you said you had an epiphanic moment uh, that you thought that maybe, you know, you, you, you felt like you could fly these fighter jets just because you'd been sitting there eating popcorn, watching it. And then <laughs> you also said, confident and I, I get the feeling after watching Borgen, after five Chardonnays, that I could speak Danish. Well, so... Lee and I were oh, wondering no, no, if... No, 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 no. Look, look, come on. No, 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 Come no. on, here we go. <laughs> we were wondering if... And we've got this beautiful... This look. isn't your, like, $17 million that's one, not is that, it? Because... That's... Yeah. <laughs> is this the, like, 500-year-old well, we one were that's wondering, worth a no, squillion no, dollars? There, Don't let me yeah. near Don't it. Don't sit down in front oh, of... God. So, we were wondering if... <laughs> and, and it reminds me of a joke of a now-deceased friend of mine... He had a terrific sense of humour and his name was Wire and he lived in King Island and he went in for his quadruple or maybe he was up to five bypass and he said to the doctor, the, the surgeon, will I be able to play the viola after this operation? And the doctor said, yeah, why not? And he said, fantastic. <laughs> so... <laughs> this thing can, feels can like she, a bird Can she have hands. a bow? Yes. Hey, do you want me to hold your mic for you? I don't know. I feel uh, a bit paralysed. I think we'll hold the mic. Thank you for your fairness in asking me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hold the mic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. No, talk, no, no more talking. It's, it's Annabelle's <laughs> audition so, for the ACO. Yes, that's right. It goes in the left hand, <laughs> violin in the left hand. Have you had any music lessons on any Looking music? good. Okay. No, she hasn't. <laughs> Let's have a look. That's the Top right. Gun slash Borgen test. Let's see yeah, if it yeah, actually yeah. works. Okay, Iceman is about to... <laughs> I think she's goose, we actually, go. Richard. We're ready for takeoff, ladies and gentlemen. First note. <laughs> oh, woo! <laughs> Very solid. <laughs> we have to play a piece. <laughs> Oh, this is great. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hang on. Ready? <laughs> I think it's 
sound a better when it's just me, Richard. <laughs> I just, I just suddenly got incredibly nervous about Richard's actual real violin. So can you just put that down, and can you just get that and get off stage? <laughs> Tell us about the real violin. Okay, the real violin was um, is owned by anonymous benefactors. Some people who like to remain anonymous, anonymous. Others like to have their anonymity celebrated. But um, in this case, they're they are wonderful, uh, maybe a wonderful person or people who decide to invest in a violin. And it was made in the year 1743, which is the year that Thomas Jefferson, the third president and the last good president of the, you know, <laughs> of the United States of America, was, was born. And incidentally, he also played the violin. He was a wine collector. He did pretty much everything. And, uh, and so it's made in Cremona, which is the heartland of violin makers. And of course, the most famous one uh, is Stradivarius. So. Um, I wanted to um, say as well, in terms of you know, people who are being incredibly generous and so on, have a seat, Richard. Um, uh, we, have, we, Crab and I don't believe in asking people to, in the arts to do things for nothing, or any line of work really, but particularly in the arts, because people in the arts often get asked to do things for nothing. And so of course we offered to pay Richard and everybody tonight, and they wanted to donate their fee. And I just wondered if you wanted to tell everyone what you, you guys are donating to tonight. Yeah, so we're donating our fee to the Australian Chamber Orchestra. <laughs> Do you know what? I actually, I would be very happy to no. see that money go to the ACA. I think it's incredibly generous given no, the period you guys have okay, had. Okay, so we're you. donating it to the United Nations Refugee Fund. And because, uh, well, I mean, it's a teardrop in the ocean, of course. And um, a project I did a few years ago, which we're revisiting in August. And I, I hope that y you'll be brave enough after tonight to um, consider buying a ticket. And what is it? And it's called The Crowd. And of course, there is the notion of diaspora and movements of people around the globe. And it's just getting worse and worse and more heartbreaking, of course, as we see what's happening with the Ukraine. Um, and so that's where we're going to be you know, donating our... And our so I encourage everybody to go to the ACO because then you can deliver the money back to Richard that they're giving tonight. So that would be, because it is, I, I'm in all seriousness, arts uh, organisations have done it so tough during COVID. Um, and so, you know, we do really support everything um, that you do. And we're so thrilled that you were able to come tonight. It was gorgeous. Richard thank Tonietti, you. thank you. Yes, please get that My off the stage. My first and only violin lesson. And I'm going to move just, this to a safe spot as well. I went to the top well. guy. Thank you. <laughs>